Hi, everyone. Welcome. I am Beth Barani, creativity coach for writers, and I am doing this for a series called Hashtag Ask a Writing Coach. And today with me is Vanessa Keir, a another author like myself and an expert with Scrivener. So today she's going to help us learn more about Scrivener, and I'm going to read to you her official bio. Vanessa Keir spends way too much time thinking of ways she can torture her characters a worst case scenario thinker, she's been creating stories in her head since childhood. Now she's found her niche in writing romantic thrillers that combine intense emotion with action packed plots. The author of six books in the Surgical Strike Unit series about a privately run special operations group, she has set her new series, War, in West Africa, where she lived for a time. When she's not writing, listening to music, or playing puzzle games on her mobile device, Vanessa helps writers learn, uh, learn Scrivener through her home study course and one-on-one -on -one sessions. So welcome very much, Vanessa. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, I think this will be fun. So a lot of writers are curious about Scrivener, and they hear that it's a great writing tool, and I use it myself and love it. So what made you decide to make the switch into Scrivener? Actually, I have a slide that will demonstrate okay. this. Yes. So I will go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so I originally started out and I was using a combination of Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. And you can see here just um, the documents I was using to keep track of my characters. So I have this general character notes up here on the left, and then I have a um, little goal um, and conflict chart between my hero and heroine over here that was in Excel. I have this long character profile in Excel, and then I also had a character arc document in Excel. And then I had my main manuscript was all one word document. So I was popping back and forth between all these different documents, trying to keep track of things, and it was just driving me crazy. Um, I eventually, um, decided that I needed a program that would be able to keep it more organized. I did print out my documents at that point, and I kept them in a binder. So if I was writing and I wanted to see what my hero looked like, like this middle picture is the hero of my first book, Vengeance, um, I could look in the binder, but it was a very clunky process. So I actually tried another writing process, I mean, excuse me, another writing software before I switched to Scrivener. Because at that point, Scrivener wasn't quite as advanced as it is now, and it was lacking a couple of features that I wanted. But that other writing software eventually started having too many glitches. I was losing writing during the autosave process, and it was just a nightmare. So by that time, Scrivener had advanced a little bit more, and I decided that I would put my books that I was working on over into Scrivener, and I have never looked back. Wonderful. I know other writers are also thinking to make the switch to Scrivener, but they've heard that there's a steep learning curve, and I knew this going in too. So what advice would you give to those writers about that steep learning curve? First, if you're happy with your writing process, don't switch just because everybody else you know is using Scrivener. Because it does take a little bit of time to get used to, and if you have a good flow going and you're happy with the way your data is being organized, just don't do it. <laughs> you know, uh, you need to. I think you should have a reason for going into Scrivener, and that is that you want to improve the efficiency and the ease of your writing process. Um, second, it is going to be different from whatever program you're using now. So you need to set aside a little bit of time and get yourself used to the visual layout of Scrivener, um, do a couple of the you know, basic tutorials so you get a sense as to where everything is. Um, and third, just remember, you don't have to do everything in Scrivener from the start. There's a very basic few things that you need to know, and then you can just jump right into the writing, and later on you can start figuring out all the more intermediate and advanced features. So ease into it, and but come in knowing that it's different from what you're using and you need to account for that and you need to have an open mind and be willing to learn some new language because they have some terms that some people are a little you know confused about like what's the binder and what's the inspector <laughs> so just um be patient and be open-minded and willing to learn new stuff 
That's great. I really, I really love that. And to, to really give themselves the space to ease into the new technology. And what you said was great to be open-minded because it is, it is different. So what would you say to a pantser? So someone who writes by the seat of, the seat of their pants, someone a lot like me, um, who has heard that Scrivener is really actually best for plotters. People who love to plan every little detail out before they begin. So what advice do you have to those people like myself who, who really just want to write with a minimal amount of planning? So I've heard this from a lot of writers. And first I'm going to say Scrivener is um, for any type of writer. And like I had just said before, there's a few basic things you need to know about Scrivener before you can actually just dive into the writing. So if you're a pantser, maybe you just want to set up your project and the basic. If you have a word count goal you're aiming for, maybe you want to set your target. And then you can just jump into the writing. You don't even have to worry about setting up new documents for scenes or chapters. You can just keep everything in one long document and take care of splitting those into scenes and chapters after you're done with your rough draft. So again, if you have a couple of character notes that you want to keep track of before you start, you can do that. But it's really, you use Scrivener the way you need to use it. Don't let anybody else tell you, oh, you have to do this, that, or the other thing. It's for any type of writer and you can, you can play with it to your heart's desire. I love that about Scrivener. It's highly customizable. And you said something really great, like know what you need it for. I, I had to decide that I wanted to use Scrivener in a particular way. And once I understood the general workings, I just threw away everything else and focused on those few simple aspects of Scrivener that I needed. Um, so what can a writer do to, who's never used Scrivener to really be able to get up and running? And are you going to be able to show us anything from within Scrivener? Yeah, so let me see. Let me um, share my screen again. It's so much fun to see the inside of someone else's project. Yeah, so this was not the project I was supposed to be opening, so hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's my series Bible, and I'll actually talk about that in a minute. But this is, this is what I wanted to show you, is that basically all you have to do when you're setting up Scrivener is, um, this is your manuscript folder here. And all you have to do, you don't even have to create a folder for a chapter, which I have here. You could just create one document and this little icon on the toolbar will create a new document for you like that. All you have to do is create, this manuscript folder is default. It's created for you by Scrivener. So all you have to do is put one document in here and you could just start typing away in here. Uh, like I said, you don't have to separate it into chapters and scenes until you're done if you're a pantser. Um, That's great. You know, I have to just to say, I never noticed, or maybe my version of Scrivener, I've hidden it, but I never noticed the icons. I always use the menu or right click or, or something to create my files. So I just learned something. Well, and that's customizable too. So you can go up and you can add the ones you want. So if you notice up here, I've added the targets, I've added the microphone, so that actually allows Scrivener to read back my rough draft to me um, using the Mac OS voices. And then I have these four arrows here that move things left, right, up, down in the binder. So you can take things away or add things in, um, in the toolbar here. Oh, that's fabulous. So what is your favorite feature of Scrivener? I, as we were talking before, I like the fact that it's so flexible. It, um, it can handle most tasks that I need it to handle. And I am kind of a reforming pantser. My preferred, you know, writing method is really to pants, but I write such long, complicated books that I've run into a lot of trouble. Um, where if I don't plan out ahead, I get um, to a point where the book is finished and then I have to throw out most of it as I am tightening up the different arcs. So what's great about Scrivener is that as my process has evolved as a writer, so has my use of Scrivener. So I've recently learned some new techniques that are helping me to um, keep track of my um, plot arcs, for example. That's wonderful. It's such a flexible tool. 
So can you walk us through some of the key ways in which you use Scrivener in your writing process, if you don't mind, um, so we can peek under the hood, so to speak? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, what I'm going to do, let's see here. So this is the Scrivener file for Disruption, which was the first book in my war series. And you can see that I've done a couple of things here that I really like about Scrivener. You can see that I'm using colors. So I am a very um, visually oriented person. So each color of a document represents a different point of view. So my heroine, I went standard. My heroine's pink, my hero's blue, my bad guy's black. And then I have some secondary characters. So that's one way that I really like Scrivener because just by looking at my binder, I get a visual um, idea of how many scenes are in each point of view. And so I can see if I'm unbalanced as far as one character has a more point of view scenes than another because I want my hero and heroine to be roughly even. So that's something I really like about Scrivener. I also like um, the ability to just, and I'm not going to do this because I don't want to mess up my file, but to drag and drop files around in um, the binder. So, um, and then if you go down here, I create subfolders and subfolders for my characters. And then I stack a whole bunch of different um, documents under there. And that's something else I really like about Scrivener is um, the way that they um, handle characters. So here's the character profile that I've customized for the hero in this book. And I've put his image over here on the right. So when I was working in Excel and Word, I'd have to go into Excel file to find all this character stuff. But because Scrivener has this split editor, I could have Max down in the bottom and I could have his point of view seen up top. And then I could go down here and lock my inspector. So I'm seeing his image even when I'm working in his scene. So if I have to describe him in here, I could still see his picture. So Scrivener is really great because it lets you keep all of your important information right there at your fingertips when you need it. That's wonderful. There's so many things you can do there. And I'm a little bit blown away because um, I actually use a much more plain version of Scrivener. I like a cleaner, sort of plainer, not mm -hmm. colorful like you. I think this will really give people inspiration about all the different things they can do. Uh, especially, it's really wonderful to be able to put images of your characters in to the character section. Yeah, and if you look, I'll show you my series Bible. If you look over my series Bible, and I actually have brought in here all the books in this series are in this book. But if you look down here, you'll see that I've actually added custom icons for some of the characters. So these are my good guys, they're soldiers, so I have a little soldier icon. Down here, I have my bad guys. And so I've got like a Darth Vader icon, a <laughs> skull icon. So it's very visually you know, appealing to me. Um, Where do you get those icons? I actually um, downloaded the icon set from Fat Cow. It's you know just F A T C O W, and then um, you can go if you um, if you right click and you do change icon, you can go all the way down to the bottom and manage icons. Mm -hmm. it brings up a window that will allow you to to add in the icon the specific icons that you want. You don't add in a whole set at once, but you can you can add in individual ones. So you can see here, like I have a helicopter and I have a jeep. So, I, you know, again, I'm visually oriented. I have map, uh, little flags, you know, for the fake countries I've created. That's uh, great. That's really, really so, wonderful. So, and you said, so you have a separate Scrivener file as the Bible for the series, and then you have one Scrivener file for each book. Correct. Uh, and, and do you put the manuscript for each book as you complete it into the series Bible? Yeah. So if I go up here, this is, um, this is the series Bible we're in, and these are the, these are the documents 
from disruption. And then you can see here I have intrusion and opposition in the next two books. So I prefer to work in a um, more compact environment. So I create a separate file for the individual book. That way I only bring in the characters that I need for that book to look at because obviously I've got a really long character list. Um, but then I, at the end, I copy everything into my series Bible as I need it. And, you know, it's not perhaps um, a method that anybody else would want to use, but it works for me. That's great. One person did ask me, I did get a few questions ahead of time, and somebody said they had a spreadsheet where they used to track all their scenes, and they're wondering how do they bring that spreadsheet, or if they can bring that spreadsheet, into Scrivener. You can bring the spreadsheet into Scrivener and have it basically, um, for the Mac version, um, open a, a, a kind of visual um, look at that spreadsheet. It doesn't, if you bring it into the Windows version, it'll basically just create a link to the document out on your desktop or wherever you save the document. Um, so it's, it's, um, I did have that in a um, lesson that I did for my online course. I would have to find it, but I did have an example of how it looked to have the, uh, an Excel spreadsheet brought in. But you have to realize that if it, once it's brought into Scrivener, you're losing most of the features that Excel had. So if it was, you know, if it was a number calculating, spreadsheet you're not going to get that in Scrivener if but it's you just can, information you, yeah and you can create tables in Scrivener so for example if I go all the way down here to my template sheets I created this inside of Scrivener this GMC chart and create a table in Scrivener so depending on how much data it is there you could also recreate it in Scrivener okay great what would you say are the biggest misconceptions that writers have about Scrivener? I think people sometimes think that Scrivener requires you to be a tech genius. And that is really not true. You do, like I said, you do need to be open to learning new terms and learning a new program. Um, and also the biggest thing that I um, see writers wanting is that they want Scrivener to do everything for them. And it's really not intended to be an all-in-one publishing tool. It's a writing aid. So it, you know, it's good at the word processing, it's good at the data organization, but um, it's not as strong on the publishing into ebook um, formats. It can do it, but there have been some issues with some of those formats, but I, I do see sometimes where writers seem to expect Scrivener to be the only tool they're ever going to need for their publishing. And I think writers need to come into this accepting it for what it is and not demanding that it cover every aspect. It's, you know, it's not really meant to handle graphics. You know, it's, it's more of a, you know, your text for your book as far as, you know, you can bring in images that you're using for research and stuff, but it's not something that you're going to be putting together your cover. Like you're not going to be designing your cover inside a Scrivener. Do you use Scrivener to format your book for ebook and for print, or do you do that somewhere else? I have since switched to Vellum for my ebook, um, and I will be switching to Vellum for print since it will make it very easy just to swap over from ebook to print. But I am in the process of doing an um, online course on how to use Scrivener for print. Um, I think you still get a very good um, quality book if you do it um, through Scrivener. Again, you're not doing the cover for the print edition through Scrivener. You're just doing the interior file. Um, but uh, I have done the last three books in Scrivener for my print version. Um, so that, that works. I think that works well. That's great. I, I too use Vellum for my ebooks and now, now for print and they look nice. Um, so is there anything that you would like to see changed in Scrivener? Yeah. Um, as anybody who's got Windows knows, the Windows version is not nearly as robust as the Mac version. 
Mm -hmm. um, so anybody who takes my home study course needs to be aware of that I, you know I cover what Windows can do in, in the Windows course. Um, there is a new version of Scrivener coming at 3.0. The Mac version will get it this year and then my understanding is the Windows version will get it next year. And supposedly that's going to bring Windows closer to the Mac in parity. There are a couple areas actually in the Windows version that I, I would like to see in the Mac version. Um, the first, and this is important to me because of the, um, I write African characters, is the Mac version has a really weak database of names you can use when you're doing the name generator. Windows has a much more robust, not only because it has more ethnicities and nationalities that you can choose from the names, but you can also search by meaning which you can't do on the Mac version. <laughs> it, they're two separate developers because the, I, uh, the operating systems are so different. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, which is technical, and I'm not going to get into it, but the way um, it handles the um, scratch pad. Um, Windows has a little bit more robust options for handling the scratch pad than the Mac version does. There's a couple of different options there. So, but in general, I, I would like to see um, the Windows version get beefed up. So right now, the Windows version is not generally as robust and full as the Mac version. Right. So there's a couple of, you know, things that, you know, I teach a lesson on it on the Mac version, but then I go over to the Windows version. I'm like, oops, well, they don't have that option. <laughs> you know, it's nothing major. I mean, you can do all the big things, you know, moving your scenes around and creating character sketches and stuff. Um, but for, you know, one example is you can, on the Mac version, bring a web page into your binder and then it will actually show you a working version of the web page in the binder and the editor window and all you get is a hyperlink on the Windows side. Okay. So. Yeah, details like that. Great. Yeah. So how can, um, so I understand you have a home study course uh, on Scrivener. You have a Windows version and a Mac version. Where can people find out more about that? Well, they can go to my website. Um, the course is called Power Up Your Writing Process with Scrivener, but the URL is www.vanessakeer.com forward slash Scrivener hyphen course backslash um, actually well, I'll give your affiliate link which is Scrivener hyphen course hyphen Beth back forward slash great and we'll have that in the show notes and I understand that you have a freebie also people are curious and they want to get started you have some tips uh, to help them yes and where can they get that um, it's also on your site right oh, it's also on my website um, I think it's VanessaCare.com forward slash seven hyphen Scrivener hyphen secrets forward slash and that's the number seven not the word spelled out but um, you'll you know you might have to check the URL that's for the totally show fine notes. and and what is that freebie so people oh, seven <laughs> tips on um, using Scrivener so it just seven just kind of really fast. Um, little shortcuts within Scrivener just to make your life a little bit easier. Wonderful. And just so people understand the scope of your knowledge, how many novels have you written inside of Scrivener? Uh, I don't know. Because I moved some of my first books over. So I've probably written, I don't know, five or more. You That's know, great. I have a lot of, I also use it for all my course planning. I use it for, um, I do newsletter um, exclusive short stories in, set in my story world. So those are all done in Scrivener. Um, so, and then I, you know, I have my series Bible. So, I mean, I've been using Scrivener for several years now. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I would never go back to anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything and, I, and now that it's got mobile version, you know, which again is even less robust than like the Windows version, but if you're just traveling, it does the basics. Um, I love the mobile version. I used it to write four novels, yeah, last year and this year, so it's, it's fabulous. Yeah, and I love also Scrivener's um, 
I, oh yes, I, I use it um, for screenplay as well because I have a screenplay formatting tool. Right. And yes, and that's really the other thing I didn't mention is that, you know, you don't have to use this for fiction. They have, like you said, a screenplay template. I don't know if they have a stage play template. I think so. But you can also, like, uh, that's one of the things you get if you take my home study course is that I actually have a template I've created in there for your series Bible um, for, you know, so you could download that and import that into Scrivener. So Scrivener allows you to create and save your own templates and you can share them with people. That's so really if you cool. have a specific like three act structure that you've put together, you can say that it's a template and then you can share it with people. That's really wonderful. Well, Vanessa, I really wanna thank you for taking the time today to share us a little bit about Scrivener. And if people, if you guys have more questions, please do ask Vanessa about them. She is a wonderful Scrivener expert. And is there any last words that you wanna to say to, to our listeners to, writers about Scrivener? Don't be afraid. You know, just give yourself a little bit of time to learn it, and I think you'll love it as much as I do once you get into it. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you.